to say this for the Obama people and for Obama himself. They know how to mount an event like this. He, with the soaring rhetoric and the, and the themes that have made his speeches such a hallmark of this campaign, the crowd turning out, responding to him just by being there, of course, and with the music and the total effect of it all, they raised a lot of money. They knew how to spend it. They spent it effectively. And now Joe Biden has his moment. We were all sitting here thinking that if Senator Biden were allowed to make a speech now, too, that uh, we could all probably go home and uh, the morning team would be there to pick it up when he was done. Friendly fellow, we're all fond of him, but he is a bit loquacious. Nay, even garrulous. So there they are, President and Vice President-elect, on their big night in Chicago. Music plays in the back. They're great with the music. They had great music at Invesco Field, too. I love it. Look at those people. What a moment. tonight I noticed the faces in the crowd uh, you see tears in the eyes of some and understandably so and I noticed the face of Jesse there he is Jesse Jackson and now the wives Jill Biden Michelle Obama said that uh, money is the mother's milk of politics. It's what political campaigns run on. But political campaigns run on something equally as powerful. And that, as you see here in these pictures and in so many others through these political years, is emotion. Emotion is a driving force in much of human conduct, but it is certainly a major driving force in politics. State now, yeah, had quite a successful career as a basketball coach. Now the extended families pour out onto the stage. I love these moments. Little kids are great at political events. They always threaten to steal the show, but and that gives you a sense of the media throng, uh, all the cameras back there with the lights. Kids are great. Look at those kids. Aren't they the best? Vice President-elect Biden, his mom.
uh, Senator Obama said great challenges and difficulties lie ahead. Uh, he mentioned two wars. He mentioned the unprecedented in many ways financial crisis. He mentioned many other things, but um, those are things for another day, although he took note of them. Tonight, as you can see, to these people, and to the thousands joined there with them in Grant Park in Chicago and many thousands and millions more across the country, tonight is a night of victory and a night of hope when all things seem possible. It really seems possible that this remarkable man will be someone truly and remarkably different who can lift us out of the out of the partisan differences that divide us, the ideological divisions that, uh, that, that keep people apart, who can change the atmosphere in Washington as his predecessor had hoped to do but could not, who can somehow find an, a, a set of policies that are right for the time, who can fight the war on terror in some different way perhaps that uh, will be more, that will be at least as successful and maybe more so. That's the thing, these are the things that people can hope tonight. As Barack Obama has been elected an African American and, and the son of immigrants, the 44th president of the United States of America. What a story. What a night. My panelists are correcting me on the fact that I, I said that Barack it. Obama was the son of immigrants. He was the son of an immigrant. Well, they've departed the stage now, and for all intents and purposes, the celebration there is over, although those people in Grant Park may be there a while. I know I suspect if I were out there this warm night and it worked all year for Barack Obama, I would want to stay up a while, too, to savor the moment. Let's turn now for some some thoughts on how this came about. Um, it was uh, you heard McC you heard reflections of this uh, notion in John McCain's uh, uh, speech tonight. He said that uh, that it was always um, a challenged campaign, and the question really arises as to whether, in fact, it was the brilliance of the Obama campaign, the discipline in its execution, that won this race mostly, or whether it was a set of events which lined up an unpopular war, an a unpopular president, uh, an economy already perceived as troubled and, and, and in poor condition, uh, to which was added then this extraordinary credit market crunch and market meltdown we saw over the past month whether those were the driving events here. Fred Barnes, your thoughts? Well, those were certainly driving events, but uh, I think there's uh, one thing, while we don't agree on what kind of a president Barack Obama is going to be, I think we all agree that he's one of the best candidates, one of the most extraordinary candidates ever. Uh, now, I've lived in Virginia almost my whole life, uh, and I really didn't think Barack Obama had a chance to win Virginia. Now, Virginia's elect, you know, they have, uh, Virginia elected a, uh, a black man, Doug Wilder, governor in 1989. So I, I didn't think it was so much the racial problem. It's just the fact that you know, Virginia is a, a moderately conservative state, and he was a liberal Democrat. I looked around at the state to see how Jim Webb did, who barely won the Senate seat, a Democrat, in 2006. Uh, and, and it looked like he did better in the areas where Barack Obama couldn't possibly do better. The exurbs around Washington, Loudoun County and Prince William County, for instance, uh, and then in the area with, with so much active duty and retired military around Virginia Beach and Norfolk. And yet, <laughs> that's exactly where he did do better than Jim Webb, uh, and better in a lot of other places, too. Uh, just quite an amazing... Uh, just quite an amazing feat. I mean, the, the one... Of, of all the states where he staged a breakthrough, uh, this year. The one that's most amazing to me is Virginia. Uh, and, you know, up until this race uh, was called for him in Virginia, 
I just didn't think he could. I didn't think he could pull that off, and yet he did. What a great campaigner! What a great uh, campaign! Um, and I think you have to. Without that, obviously he was helped by all these other factors, but without being the kind of candidate he was, so self-disciplined and so uh, strong on the stump, he wouldn't have won. It's pretty amazing that the seat of the old Confederacy helped put the first uh, African American in, in office, in, in Oval Office. Um, I think the arc of this campaign is, is interesting, and, and it's a combination, it shows the combination of his magnetic personality, a, a disciplined campaign, and events. And what I'm talking about is the the campaign, when you look back six months ago, it was really about experience. You think back to uh, Hillary Clinton's... Well, Hillary PAM Clinton tried to make ad. it about experience. She made it about it. And it didn't McCain, work. And it didn't it's, work. It, and well, it did. It did somewhat. I mean, it did. It did somewhat. I mean, she had. She ran a vigorous campaign. Um, McCain. It didn't do it enough. Obviously, McCain tried to pick that up and run with it. Is 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 he? Can he be commander in chief? But what was interesting is the financial crisis unfolded. It became a campaign about temperament and personality. And the first, the time that I thought that Barack Obama was probably going to win was when he started showing in the polls seven out of ten people think he has the temperament and personality and we're talking about experience temperament and personality to be president so this sort of cool measured calm response to um, to the financial crisis and, and which was reflected in debates was it, as well. Wasn't it really more of a cool measured non? Wouldn't him. you say it was more of it a cool a, measured non-response? Well, what he did is he he set out guidelines and he, he tried to uh, follow the the lead of um, Secretary Paulson. He didn't try. He didn't look like he was trying to score political points. Um, but he came off, his demeanor came off as reassuring to voters. And I think um, that's something that really helped him. It's interesting, <coughs> I talked to um, one of his uh, financial advisors last week and I said, aren't you all guys all a little intimidated about what you're stepping into? I mean, this is, this is you know, economists are predicting the possibly deepest, longest recession since the 30s. And he said Obama, in con by contrast, Obama actually seemed to be more chomping at the bit to get in office as the crisis worsened. So, again, Isn't that interesting? suited. Yeah. Well, the great campaign was the primary campaign, though. I mean, no question, coming from you know, being 25 points down in mid-2007 and upsetting Hillary Clinton, who had so much of the establishment behind her and had the money advantage at the beginning. It's been a long time since we've had that kind of upset in a primary race. Uh, I thought he ran a competent general election campaign, but to be honest, I think if Hillary Clinton had been the nominee, she would have won probably as well. And in fact, the, the exit poll can't wait, tell how much to put how much weight to put on this, and the exit poll suggests that as well. But it was look, it was a competent and disciplined general well, election it, it, campaign, which took advantage of uh, underlying factors which were in his favor. Well, uh, certainly, uh, what's interesting about this is we've talked about this campaign. We all admire it because of its discipline and because of the fact that the primary campaign, in particular, was so well conceived that it built this firebreak for him in those in those caucus states that allowed him to withstand Hillary's late charge, uh, Hillary Clinton's late charge, Senator Clinton's late charge. But you know, when you think about it, this campaign was really about an idea. But it wasn't a political idea. It was the idea of Barack Obama. And that was really the only idea that this campaign was about. If you look at the agenda that he ended up running on, it was almost a pre, it was sort of a combination of a Clinton and a pre-Clinton Democratic agenda. It was very conventional. There isn't a, a big new animating idea. Now, now look, it's not all the time that an election can be won on a big new idea. Ronald Reagan, I think, arguably won at least run it while running on some big new ideas. His economic proposals were considered to be outlandish at the time. There was certainly something new and different. Um, and, you know, I think his whole idea that we could win the Cold War outright, uh, which is something that, you know, more or less came through, I guess, in that campaign, was, was a little controversial at the time. I can't... Juan, is there in the Obama uh, list of uh, proposals? a really new idea, a really big idea? Not that I see. I mean, uh, you know what, I think, Britt, uh, you know, we are, I think, as on the panel, all of us respectful of President Bush, but the fact is he's a very unpopular president. And in so many ways, uh, this is a response to the fact that you have a, an incumbent that people want gone. And, uh, uh, I, I mean, I think in so many ways it's an unpopular war, it's a difficult economy. You're right, it was a brilliant campaign. Uh, 
especially in the early going and, and picking up the caucuses, terrible mistakes, arguably political malpractice committed by the Clinton uh, campaign for not understanding, the not being able to count up the votes necessary uh, to win the Democratic nomination. But my sense of, of the new idea or the animating idea, you said it's, it is Barack Obama. He is the embodiment, and I think it's about change. I think it's people saying, you know what, I want to get beyond the war. I want to get beyond the partisanship that has come to define Washington politics over the last era. And especially for the young that people. That would favor anybody from the out party, wouldn't it? Well, it would. Uh, I think for the young people, though, it's almost like they want to stick their finger in our eyes with regard to race in specific. You know, when I look at the numbers here, we have an exit poll that shows, you know, Barack Obama lost this race among white men, 57 41. He lost it among white women, 53 46. He actually, uh, you know, John McCain did five points worse among white men, two points worse among white women. Uh, than President Bush did in 04. So this really is about that larger electorate then, that, that the electorate has changed and expanded, and we come back to this idea then, what is it that appealed to that electorate? What is it that appealed to them? Is it simply that he was a black person running for office? Uh, or is it that he really was not George Bush, especially on the war? Right. Just one other thought. I mean, I think John McCain and Sarah Palin deserve a nod. I mean, they ran a, I, I didn't like the campaign much. I think I said they should, they should fire the campaign at one point. But as candidates, they were impressive. They fought. And McCain made, a lot, took a lot of gambles. Some of them worked out well, I think. Some of them not so well. But they fought to the end. They outperformed the generic Republican ticket, obviously. I think when we add up all the votes, they will run ahead of the House candidates across the country and Senate candidates across the country. Um, and uh, they kept it competitive. And, you know, 46 percent, 45 percent, whatever he'll end up with, isn't bad. I was there in the first Bush White House, and we, we dropped to 38 percent in 92. You know, when, a, when, a, when an incumbent president and party is unpopular, you can really oh, it's collapse. A tremendous weight. No, yeah, no. And, and, and McCain held it up there around 46 percent. That's sort that of impressive. I, I, I got to tell you, Bill, I, I think you're right. And, and just, you know, just to weigh in a little bit here myself, I would say this about this campaign. that. It was an exercise, as you've heard me say, an improvisation almost from the beginning. And it needed to be once the once the the original phase of the McCain campaign had failed and and the campaign had basically collapsed. And McCain did something that I think was characteristic of McCain throughout his career and throughout this campaign, and that is he decided to seize on something he thought was right and deeply believed in and run on that. And in this case, of course, it was this it was the surge in Iraq, which he had argued for long before the president was ready to accept it, and supported in every way he could. And then he went out on the No Surrender Tour, which was a very interesting idea, so characteristic of McCain, you know, hitting the, hitting the streets with that idea, out on the bus, uh, campaigning on a shoestring, and, and clawed his way back into that race. That was no small achievement. Ends up winning. And right away, you have to, I mean, he comes out of that out of the Republican nominating process with this dazzling new figure on the other side, all the political gravity in the year, all favoring the Democrats, and a popular incumbent president, um, despite the fact that Congress has a terrible reputation, the Democrats have been running it, the public does not seem to see it that way or to see to associate that with, uh, with uh, uh, in any way with the Democrats as a party for some reason. And John McCain goes into this, the economy is already perceived as bad. And, 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 and you go through this, this series of events in which he, Barack Obama, stages this, this, uh, this extraordinary win. It captures all the interest and sucks all the political oxygen out of the political season until it is settled. It is finally settled. He then has this convention, which was, a, which was as carefully planned and staged as anything you can imagine. He makes a safe choice for vice president and, and comes out of the convention in good shape. And in a day, John McCain has stepped on him with the Sarah Palin nomination, which was a nervy move, another improvisation, obviously decided on at the last minute, and then they worked their way through. And he's doing fine until one thing and one thing only comes along, and that is the financial crisis. And how anybody can really argue in the face of all of that that this political tactic or that one or that one could have overcome that, I don't know. I don't think it was possible. I think that was the deciding factor. Now, it wouldn't have been possible, Juan, to make the, and, and Fred, you both have made the point, it wouldn't have been possible if people simply saw Barack Obama as an unacceptable alternative. And it is to his everlasting credit that in a year when they were seeking an alternative, and he is someone who could, with his past and so on, have seemed too scary, did not. And that was his great achievement. Now, 
Major Garrett is a guy who has covered this a lot more closely than any of us uh, this year. He's been out there all, all along, and he's out there again tonight late, and he's standing by, and I want to go to him. Major? Well, good evening, Britt. We have with us here on the uh, riser at Grant Park in Chicago, Anita Dunn, senior advisor to the campaign. Anita, thank you very much for joining us on Fox. First of all, we were just discussing a second ago where this campaign was two years ago. And maybe to give our viewers a sense of the improbability of it all, tell us what was happening two years ago. Well, two years ago, the campaign didn't exist. There was a, a small um, political operation in the basement of a townhouse on Capitol Hill that had a flooding flood every time it rained on um, Washington. So it's come a long way since then. Britt and our audience, Anita was telling me that in those days when it would rain, the floor would flood and they'd have to pick up all their soaking paperwork just to keep on going. Anita, there's so many questions on the minds. What comes next? What is the governing structure of an Obama administration? What are its set of priorities? How will it approach the many difficulties that Senator Obama, now President-elect Obama, just outlined in his speech here? Well, I think what you heard tonight was a a president-elect who is determined to move forward in uniting the nation and to do what he has talked about on the campaign trail for years now, which is to look for the best ideas from Democrats and Republicans alike and to bring people together, unite them to move forward. And to be honest about the challenges facing this nation, Major, I think that he sent a clear signal tonight that he's going to level with the American people and that he's going to look for opportunities not to have the partisan gridlock of the past, but to really try to bring people together to move forward. It seems uh, worth pointing out historically that when Bill Clinton was elected, I still was a candidate on the Democratic side who zeroed in on the economy. Though he talked about a down economy, was actually getting a little bit better. This economy is probably going to get worse. All the economic analysts say so. Is that a difficulty and is that particular fact that the economy is heading for worse times, not better, an extra burden for President-elect Obama? I think that President-elect Obama is under no illusions about the the nature of the challenge facing him. But I think he also has a great faith in the American people and our ability to, to rise and meet those challenges, particularly when we work together. And I think that what you can look for over this transition period will be, uh, you know, very, very strong messages.